This is a TikTok question. Uh, beloved Sheikh, how do we get out of our head? Ooh, uh, do we, did we just talk about that? <laughs> do your meditation and muraqaba. The whole path is based on leaving your head. When Prophet described to his companions, leave your head outside and come with your heart. And uh, people thinking, dunya is shopping, Shaykh I don't really like fashion anymore, mashaAllah dunya left me. Dunya left you? What are you talking about? Dunya is much more complicated. This is the most complicated one, the one whom thinks too much through their head and if you allow them, now they're going to plot the whole process in their head, I do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, but you took away now the miracle of Allah in which guidance from the heart and the way of the heart in which basically, uh, what do we call it, Surah? Suit up, stay quiet <laughs> and what was the other one? Suit up, suit up. There's three, three S's, <laughs> suit up, stay, to come dress yourself, stay quiet. Show up. And show up I guess, eh? <laughs> I don't know the third one's show up, I means just bring your body. It's not really much else needed from you. Come, make your connection and make all your practices, do your awrat and continuously contemplate. Life is like a chess game. Allah gave us the two ears and the, the people of Marifa, they know the two ears is not for outside. The two ears actually is for the inner listening, not the outer listening. So they trained on how to shut the two ears off. And life is like a chess game, Any, anything that coming to you is to contemplate, what's this choice now? And they meditate over every action, every thought, what they're going to do. And you know in chess that you can't move something and take your hands off. Like a kid's, if you play with the kids they take their hand off, oh no, 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 let me take it back. No, what do you mean you took your hand off, the game is finished, the, the step is, mo is lost. They live their life like that, they have to think, if I move here I'm going to be hit from four different directions. Can you imagine a shaykh? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. If it doesn't operate like that and keep getting into difficulty, keep getting into calamity and taking you know 50 people with them into, into calamities, they don't know what they're doing every five minutes doing everything uh, crazy. But every step has to be that if I move this step, what's going to be the effect in every direction? And if, if okay and their heart says, okay, they step. Allah may send a test as a result but at least they thought of different directions of difficulty and that's the people of the heart. The one from their mind is, okay they're playing all over the game, they lost, they don't care, they say, okay let's play another round and then they keep… And everything is just through the head but this is a, is a way like a, a chess game in life in which not you're going to memorize the steps, that's not a chess game because your opponent if it's a computer you can't memorize your plays but you're, you're occupying from your heart that you contemplate every action and what will be the ramifications of that action. And that's why this path is difficult, it's not an easy path. And if you give too much to the head it just becomes stronger and stronger before you know it 
you've left anything to do with the heart and then you respect all the head people. But this one said and this one said and the degree of this one's like this. It's like the degree, what the heck does that have to do in Allah's presence? All those degrees mean nothing to Allah and if that degree is something that made them to think that they're greater than God, then imagine what type of guidance people are getting. So that's, that's not the, the way that Allah wanted things, is that you adhere to the people of the heart and that's where the miracle of Allah will occur. They said doctors without borders went into a village and, and they were giving everybody medicines for a sickness and everybody was coming and taking the medicines, taking the medicines, taking the prescription, going getting their medicine. And one very old Sufi and pious person came smiling, good adab, manners and the doctor wrote something on a piece of paper, he took the paper, went home. And then people came back and medicine worked, it didn't work, no big thing. But this one guy came back and he was like ecstatic and everything fantastic, thanking them the doctors. And the doctors were like surprised, okay, okay great, yeah everything was worked out, you, you got the medicine, you, you took everything. And he said, what medicine? So the, the one we wrote for you. He said, no you, you, you gave me something, I put it in water, drank it and Allah healed me. Means the level of their belief was so powerful that it was enough for Allah to hear to heal them but they used this as a means to be healed. That it was, it was his own faith that healed him by means of that nusqa and that prescription. The medicine wasn't going to do anything, he knew that his healing is going to come from Allah But the level of belief and adherence to that was important. But that's a very high level awliyaullah. But for us every day is to believe, to believe. We take the medicines we have to take, we believe, we meditate, contemplate, everything. But our respect and our love is for the people of the heart, not the people of the head. And that you put them down, you put the people of the heart down and you now begin to only follow the people of the head, you people don't know. No, they know, they know more than those other people, inshaAllah. This is uh, from Help Me Sayyidi. Uh, as salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi. Wa alaykum uh, Sayyidi, I'm doing muraqaba daily but Sayyidi, I'm not feeling the presence of the shaykh or anything else. Sayyidi, I'm doing my awrads and trying to follow the teachings as much as possible but I must admit that I have many character defects and shortcomings in following the teachings. What I was worried about is whether the reason for not feeling anything in the meditation is due to my shortcomings in following the <coughs> teachings or is it because I've done or asked something that hurted you and you are displeased with me? Please forgive me if I did something like that <coughs> and keep your blessed nazar and madad upon this weak one. No inshaAllah it's nothing anything personal unless you, 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 you did do something like vulgar and, and, and attack the shaykh. Most people don't do things like that and then try to meditate and connect with them. This is based on adherence to the practices. If you're not taking a formula and we said it's like cooking. So imagine like cooking, you give it 10 ingredients to make this soup. If you put three ingredients you basically have hot water. Is that a soup? No. So when people say, I'm being attacked and this is not working and you go through all their ingredients, they put three pieces in. Then did you do the meditation, do you do the awrad, you make your connections, you do your salah, you do your wudu, you do everything Allah asks from you, everything Prophet asks from you and then what you've been trained from ulul amr. I did it, I'm of service, I meditate, I, I connect, I have my taweez, I'm doing all these energy practices, I read from the book. How could it not work unless the heart is dead? That's a different discussion because people's hearts shouldn't be dead based on the actions that they're doing. So when somebody says, no I'm not doing bad things, I'm doing all my practices. Then you go back and check and see from the meditation book, are you doing all the practices and you do them consistently every day and you don't mix it with Reiki and you don't mix it with you know going out and doing weird things, you don't miss, mix it with drugs. We've had people who say, oh well it's not, it's not working, 
oh but oh they, they do and they, they take things that are not allowed. Are you surprised? You're really surprised that if you do these types of things that are forbidden and you harm yourself with intoxicants and things that are extremely harmful to your soul, to your reality, to your lungs, to everything, you're expecting Allah to open the heavens? No, this is a this is a high level security clearance required. You know, it's like going through the airport with your pockets filled with the contraband. The TSA is not going to let you go through the airport, the security at the airport not going to let you through. So what do you think from Allah's security? Allah's not letting anyone through with these bad things. So it goes back to we take an inventory and say, are we doing all the good things and all the things we can? We, we go out and we're of service, we do our charity and it, you know charity is the, the one that fills all gaps. The one whom is doing bad things and thinks that, oh nobody knows what I'm doing. The shaykh knows what they're doing, Allah knows what they're doing, Prophet knows what the bad things they're doing. And as a result of these bad, then the sadaqah, zakat, all of these are the ones that fill in the gaps of where things are going wrong. That's why again that's a part of that program. So people, the actions that they do and the actions that are not pleasing get cleansed by these uh, khidmat and, and uh, all of the different ways that Allah gave zakah and zaki and purification. So everything is an entire package inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum salam wa Alhamdulillah uh, the teachings are so amazing Sayyidi. In respect to the reality of form, light and sound, I want to know how the Nur Muhammad was created. Was it based on sound kun fayakun that first brought the light of Sayyidina Muhammad That we have in the Nur Muhammad and Allah is a hidden secret wanting to be known. And Kun Fayakun is for Prophet for Allah is just Qul, I merely say and it comes into existence. And that Allah that we've taught many times that Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. At that moment that Allah wanted to be known basically said to the light, be and it was. And from that light Allah that's this way of arifin is 12,000 of Allah's years continuously making a, a zikr upon that hijab. And then these are the 12 parda, the 12 hijabs or 12 veils of reality. That for one veil Allah 12,000 years made a zikr, for the next veil 11,000 years Allah made a zikr, for the next veil 10,000 of Allah's years made a zikr upon the light that we call Muhammadun Rasulullah What Allah's zikr, what power, what realities were dispensed upon that soul and that reality and what was coming into existence as a result of Allah's nazar and gaze and zikr upon that light. That becomes then the whole study of Nur Muhammad and Haqiqat al Muhammadiyya, that soul that we've been teaching, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Alhamdulillah Sayyidi, does reading Qur'an from the book have different reality in comparison to reading through mobile digital devices? As I and my other colleagues feel more satisfaction while reading through the printed one. Yeah, le less energy interference for those whom, who can and, and can still see the text on, on small print and they, the, the paper's always much more blessed than the computer because of the energy of the device and, and picking up the energy of the device. You can put the device down and just read it without any, any energy on it but depending upon what people have uh, available to themselves. But definitely the, the computer and devices are less, less desirable that the printed and the ancient print and the time in which uh, more pious people had handwritten them 
then those are, are very powerful because of their piety and, and their ability to write those by hand. So then that has its own, that Musaf has an immense power and the angels are on every letter of the Holy Qur'an and dispensing all of its oceans of realities inshaAllah. So definitely the, the book and the printed book has much more power inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If anyone has a taweez in the home but they buy alcohol and smoke, what is the consequence? Yeah, not a good one. Yeah, that, that, that uh, has a, its own sort of chaos. So you're bringing in a, a, a Divinely energy, so these are Divinely energies and protections. And we said that anytime you, you mix things with these realities there's going to be a lot of confusion and chaos around the person. Things breaking, things smashing, things happening. So it's, you know it's a, mixing uh, something with the heavenly energy is, is not advisable at all. But if it's beyond the ability and the control that the family wants to put something in and somebody wants to go out and harm themselves and come back into the home. That, that's upon that person, so the house keeps its sanctity and, and sanctified and that person who's coming in is going to have a lot of difficulties. So that's, that's uh, on them, doesn't mean the house should take it all down. So the house sanctifies and purifies and inhabitants enter or, or come that, that's up onto the inhabitant and that difficulty goes upon them for trying to bring that negative energy into that environment. Because sometimes you have guests that are coming from different backgrounds, different practices. So that's the protection of the ta'weez, it cleanses and keeps all those nefarious beings out of the home. So then that person it has a difficulty, oh they came and things fell on them, things happened to them, they don't like coming over to that house anymore. Yeah because this energy they bring with them is not being accepted in, in, the, in that environment. So then you see a lot of people begin to distance from people and that's again the power of the ta'weez. And those whom operating with lots of difficulty they, they get very spooked out by the people whom have protection because a lot of difficulty happens to them. And they don't understand that, yeah because when you have protection it's like you have a security force. And every time your security force goes like bouncers, getting everyone and throwing them out of the way and, and off of everything. So people are not very sort of happy about that. But it should be a sign for those people that they also need to come towards guidance and, and to have that type of protection and the things that they're doing or the lack of things they're doing actually is inviting a lot of difficulty. Some people that we've, we've come across they, they claim that they're very holy, they're very connected Ahlul Bayt, they don't believe in any of these things but goodness gracious there's entire jinn tribes are attacking them and they're complain… they're… 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 less than… what's the… they're happy or not happy but they're… they're… content? content? <laughs> I don't know, we can't even say content. But they just accept the fact that they're continuously under attack and that's I guess a, a state of arrogance that you know if, if, you, if you have that type of light and you think you have that type of light all of Islam is to come to guidance, that come to those whom Allah has given and if you're going to go it alone that doesn't mean the shaitans are, are, are feeling sorry for you, they're just astonished that, oh my gosh you're not going to go after and get protection. So imagine like a big VIP from somewhere in the world comes, he's a king, whatever one people want to call themselves, on king of something something land and arrives into a city and absolutely has no security, has no guards, has <laughs> nothing and they're choosing to walk down the streets. Well that… do you think the criminals feel sorry for that person? Or they're like, what's wrong with this, this person, has no mind, they don't have any security with them, grab them. And immediately that's the, the unseen world is exactly like that. If somebody thinks they have a, a, a very beatific light and a special light well then even more so they should be protected because the, 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 the darkness never stops, it just sees that and goes after them. And they have immense difficulties, they're complacent with that, they just see that this is a part of faith. I said, that's not a part of faith, 
just your arrogance that you don't want to reach out, you think you, you've got it all but you don't have it all and, and that's why Allah above every knower there's another knower and that Allah even asked Sayyidina Musa go to Sayyidina Khidr. So he can teach you something to, to develop you. So Allah gives the example of the highest people always in need of someone and something for a reality that they don't possess. But the people in dunya they become prideful and arrogant and say, no, no I don't need it, it's okay then you know, don't, don't have it. But they, they get very spooked by the, the presence of people who are protected, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, what is the reality of Fatima's hand, amulet and evil eye protection jewelry? Evil eye protection, those are separate. The, 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 the hand is just a significant hand and means nothing. That's just the design that we had on the hand. Now it has a heart on our logo. The importance of the the hand in reality is the hand of Prophet and his Ahlul Bayt. So that has its haqqaiqs in the reality of the hand of Prophet with Fatima Ali Hassan Hussain and the other hand of Prophet with Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman Ali. So the hands of Prophet have their reality. The evil eye has to do with the color blue, so that's it. There, that's no power in it, it's not going to get up and move but the color blue brings the nazar of people and that's what's important is that when you understand energy you have like a shield and you're asking basically to look here, look here, don't look at me with your envious eyes. And as soon as they put the blue Allah made the secret of blue to pull the eyes. So when they look at that blue immediately it catches their nazar. So people come with a lot of enmi, en, en, enmity and envy in their hearts, come to your office, come to your work, come to your home. And this is a way to distract them to look at the blue first please and then when they look there that energy goes there and now it's shielded the person from that type of difficulty. And many times they wear the blue and it cracks. So the firuz, the blue stone, they have cracks, their necklace cracks, the evil eye cracks and this is from the reality of nazar and hasad which are very real and according to all scholars accepted. But for some reason they saw oh, the, the, this, this blue device and they're, they're making a thinking it's with Allah it has a power, that was never the teaching that it had power. The reality is the color of that is drawing the eyes of people and the hasad of people inshaAllah and that's what's important. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, lately when I connect my thumb with my index finger in meditation there is some <coughs> weird feeling of energy clash in my stomach. The moment I disconnect my thumb and index finger it becomes normal. How to save oneself from this unknown difficulty? The clash is coming into your stomach? <clears throat> Maybe there's an energy within your stomach that needs to be cleansed. You know this is uh, like common sense things. If, if you <clears throat> you have a parasite inside your stomach, you eat a lot of sushi, most likely you have a lot of worms, a lot of parasites. <clears throat> you go to somebody and they give you medicine, ivermectin as an anti-parasite medicine. You take the medicine and say, say, I don't know what happened, I took this medicine all these worms came out, what is this? I should never take this medicine again. No, it was a sign that the medicine was doing what it was supposed to do. There's something in you that you don't know is in you and that medicine kills it and brings it out. So the same with energy, that if we're having an energy flow issue and as soon as we're doing positive energy movements and we're finding an issue <coughs> then direct yourself to your stomach. 
So when you sit for your muraqabah, you're making your connection, asking for the presence of the shaykh, you connect so that the, the greater power of your soul is sending a frequency to yourself. Make sure the other hand is grounding into the earth and that you're breathing. And when you're breathing the positive energy in and you're grounding out negative energy, if your stomach starts to go into turmoil, there's something has to do with the stomach. So keep breathing and bring now the focus of your energy into your belly and then visualize that energy is coming into the belly and cleansing that area. Put water in front of yourself when you're meditating and ask Allah to dress and bless this water from the, the power of this meditation. And then as the end of the meditation take that water and drink it for a shifa and for a healing. If the energy is, is more and you still think that it's not coming out, you can take a quartz rock or the Himalayan salt and when you're meditating hold it into that area. Again to bring a heated energy into an environment or into a location that you feel there's a conflict because the energy has to be flowing. When it's not flowing then there's some, some sort of a difficulty that has to be addressed. And the belly is then the house of all difficulty. What we ate, what we drink, what somebody gave to us is going to reside within the belly. So if they're eating something or went somewhere or something, there's something sort of trapped and the energy is trapped within the belly. So these are all signs that anytime you do good and positive practices and if it activates a negative experience, draw your attention to that negative experience. Because 99% of people is not doing that. So when it does do that, <clears throat> that has to be something that has to be addressed. So they use it all the time. So imagine like you go somewhere and all of a sudden your leg starts to hurt like it's burning. You weren't doing any meditation but it's just burning, then you're going to do the reverse. You're going to sit and meditate, connect, make sure you have wudu and then you're going to focus your energy on that area because something is trying to come into you and stay within you and you're going to train on how to take your energy, push it into that area and focus the energy on that area so that to push it out. So all of this is going to be a part of energy training to identify what's the good, what's the bad, how things are happening and <coughs> how to defend oneself against negative attacks inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, what's the reality if one sees a bright blue light coming towards them during practices? <clears throat> yeah, the blue light usually from the jinn world but try not to see anything, make sure that you're not trying to look through your eyes. That's not the meditation. When you sit there with your eyes closed, your head straight up and keep looking for like flashing lights through your eyes closed, it's not about that at all. So we have to sit and meditate that it's your head is down and that you're visualizing the shaykh is in, in front of you and try to keep that visualization. It's not going to happen, it's not easy to happen. So that's what you're keeping as a focus and that you're in an ocean of light and that in the presence of Rosa Sharif and the presence of Prophet Wasallam's uh, holy maqam. So keep all of these coordinates, don't let the meditation go into the <clears throat> the world of imaginal thought. If you don't keep these coordinates then you sit and close your eyes, I'm flying, I'm on a magic carpet, there's two genies next to me, we're doing, oh no, you're all over the place. You're not disciplining yourself in your tafakkur and the discipline is to keep the image of the shaykh in front of you. And so, ah shaykh I can't see you, of course you can't, it's not, it's not going to be something easy. And then you have to try to keep it, keep it so that your whole focus is try to bring that image. And then you're breathing, breathing, listening to your salawats, breathing, bringing that image and then asking Allah will keep me in the presence of salihin wa kunum itaqullah wa kunum ma sadiqeen. Allah's order was, have got consciousness and keep the presence. And Allah doesn't care for the world of form, so this is a command in the world of life. Say, so, I'm trying to keep their presence, so I'm going to sit and meditate and keep the presence, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbana zaita ma yafiqo, wa salaamun al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.